Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 39 of Future, and this one is titled Growing Up. The months and years flew by, and all the babies were growing up. You had your twin boys by Caesarean, both beautiful little bundles with their daddy's red eyes. You had three children, to your Kiri now, and it was madness at the beginning, but with Kyrie and Kaminari's help, you managed to stay sane. Ginny loved Auntie Kyrie and Uncle Danky and spent a lot of time at their place as she grew up. Kaminari loved her like his own daughter and yearned for his own kids, but never pressured Kyrie into having children. He knew the time would come when they were both truly ready. Ginny loved her baby brothers too and would keep them in line as best she could. She was now four years old and they were two. She was excited to be starting pre-K soon and was doubly excited that she would be attending the same school as her best friend Shisuki. She had already told you and Kiri that she was going to marry him when she grew up and you both thought this was very cute. Mrs Bakugo had had baby number two two days after you had had your twins. She also had a boy. He looked nothing like Bakugo though this time. He had any choice of eye colour that you choose and any choice of hair colour that you choose. But he had Bakugo's cunning nature. Poor Mrs Bakugo had her hands full with the two of them and couldn't wait to send Chisuki to school. Jem and Shoto were also considering sending Soshi to the same school as Ginny and Chisuki. He had started pre-K already at a different school, but he missed his childhood friends and wanted to be in the same school as them, so a transfer was on the cards. Soshi was a sweet boy and had a very soft spot for Ginny, but Chisuki would always block his efforts at making friends with her, so sometimes Shoto and Kiri would organise secret play dates with just the two of them so that they could play without Chisuki getting between them. Jem had had her second baby too, a beautiful little girl. She was now almost three. On Chisuki and Jinsi's first day of pre-K, you organised for all the mums to have a catch-up over coffee after dropping the kids off. It was on that morning that you found out that Soshi had indeed transferred to the same school as your Ginny and he happily trotted up to Ginny and Chisuki. Hi Ginny, he said shyly as he dug the toe of his shoe into the ground. Hi So, she replied happily, giving him a hug. Chisuki crossed his arms and scowled. Hi, Hockey, Soshi said as he looked over Ginny's shoulder as she hugged him. Okay, that's enough, Chisuki said, ripping them apart. You glanced at Mrs. Bakugo, who was smirking. Looks like your boy is a little jealous, you leered at her. I'll say. Chip off the old block, though. The apple hasn't fallen far from the tree, she laughed. You watched with amusement as Chisuki guarded Ginny like a prized possession. Every little boy that came up to her to say hello would be promptly marched on by the fiery blonde. You knew little Ginny would be fine, and with heartstrings being pulled, you left her there at the school for her first day. The four boys, Kiri, Bakugo, Shoto and Kaminari, had offered to take the younger kids for the morning so that you mums could have a little chill time and catch up. So you each kissed your respective husbands goodbye and left as a group to head down to the cafe. Oh, God, I've been needing this so badly. Mrs. Bakugo said with a relieved sigh. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my boys, but oh my god, do they test me daily, she said, throwing her hands up. You and Jem laughed. Oh, I don't know how you manage, babe. I know what Bakugo is like, and I can only imagine what it would be like with two smaller versions of him running around the same house too, you said with a sympathetic chuckle. You're doing so well, lovely, Jem added as she patted Mrs. Bakugo on the arm. This is why I've organised this morning so we can all get away for a bit, you said happily. The cafe doors loomed ahead and you pushed it open for the other two women. I need a double shot, Mrs Bakugo grumbled. Do they put whiskey in these coffees? Jem laughed. Ladies, I think we need a night out next time. Oh, let's, you said. We can paint the town like old days. Back when I was young and full of life, Mrs Bakugo lamented. You're still young and full of life, what are you talking about? You said, you're gorgeous. Speak for yourself, she shot back at you. You don't even look like you've had three kids, what's your secret? Being married to Kiri, you said with a wink and a giggle. He's such a good daddy, he's so helpful. Well, same with my show, Jem chimed in. He's so attentive to his little ones, it's so heartwarming. Okay, so Bakugo screams at the kids daily and they scream back, so screw my life, Mrs Bakugo groaned. You and Jem chuckled. You couldn't deny that this probably wasn't far from the truth. Hey, Yin, Jem said suddenly. I've been thinking, don't you think like all three of us look really similar? 
Like, we're almost the same person, but on different timelines of life. You froze and looked at Jem. Then Mrs. Bakugo. Oh, crap, she might be right. Nah, Mrs. Bakugo said. Your hair colour and mine are slightly different, she said, looking at Jem. But they're both still the same hair colour, you said, squinting suspiciously. And we all have the same colour eyes, Jem added. Half of the world's population have this eye colour, Mrs. Bakugo snorted. It's not special. There was silence for a bit as you all eyed each other curiously. <laughs> nah, forget it, Jem said with a laugh. It was just a random thought I had. And that was it. But deep down, you felt like maybe she had pointed out something that might be true. Just a little fourth wall break for that chapter. See you in the next chapter tomorrow.